Hello and welcome. This is a very interesting video I have for you today on YouTube. Uh, as many of you know, uh, I have a subscription website called The Well-Rounded Pianist, which I'm uh, highly involved with every week. I always try to do new and, and innovative things on there. And I just wanted to uh, uh, just give you a little glimpse into my typical day. I, I have uh, it is now that during the COVID-19 and, you know, I'm staying at home. I'm not teaching today any any lessons. So I have the, the, the day basically open to prepare tutorials for the well-rounded pianist. Uh, these will not be on YouTube, although I might put a teaser or something on YouTube. But I just wanted to let you in. On, on my little studio here. Of course, I have my piano, my whiteboard, and I'm in the process now of preparing a tutorial series for uh, the well-rounded pianist on Claire de Lune by Debussy. And uh, my first couple videos are gonna be on the whiteboard here. The first video, I am going to map out the whole piece and explain uh, a very efficient way of learning the piece and then uh, I fall probably on the other side of the whiteboard, it turns around, I'm going to uh, teach the most efficient and best way to learn the rhythms, especially on the first page, which sets up uh, the uh, patterns for the whole piece. So I have Claire Lune here, and uh, you, you, this, this might be a little boring for you, but I'm just gonna leave my, my camera on here. I'm gonna leave on my iPhone, and I'm just going to uh, do a little planning. I, I haven't done any planning here, so you can see how I work at this, how I go about the thought process in uh, planning for the tutorial series. So I'm mapping out the, the whole, um, Let's see, mapping out the whole architecture of Claire de Lune. Let's see here. So we have, so there's one, two, fourteen. And we have 51 to the end. Which is bar 72. Then we have 15 through 20, 26. Yeah, 15 through 26. You know, doing, doing it this way really helps to, to the efficiency of learning the piece. Uh, I've taught this many, many times and I find this to be very helpful. 27, Twenty-seven to forty-two. Twenty-seven to forty-two. Forty-three to fifty. Forty-three to fifty. Okay, let's see here. I want to make this more even. So I'm just going to put 1 to 14, 15 to 26, 27 to 42, 43 to 50, 51 to end. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm a stickler with making things even and orderly. I want five even 
five even spaces. I, I would probably, actually, yeah, what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna take a ruler. And let's see here. Two, three, four, five, good. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Let's put a little mark here. Mark here. Mark here. Mark here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm sort of thinking out loud here. Then we have bars one to 14. I'm also a stickler with making things legible. 15 to 26. 27 to 42. 43 to 50. 51 to end. Good. There we have. I'll just draw some separating lines here. Like that. Okay, so we have these. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is that you have the first and the last are really the same tempo. So if you go like that, Oh, that wasn't good. Let's see. I just like things to look presentable. There we go. So that's a nice dark line. The reason I'm doing that is because uh, this uh, equal Tampi. So, out of the five sections of the of, of the Claire de Lune, the, this section and this section have equal tempi because this is the return of the theme here. This is when it says, it actually says tempo one. Tempo one there. The beginning is Andante. You have Andante, return to Andante. This one here is Tempo Rubato. So I'll just put here Rubato. And then here, this is after the Rubato section, we have Un Poco Moso. Just put faster in English. Un poco mozo, a little faster. So that's faster than the original speed. And in bar 43, we have calmanto. Calmly. And what I like to point out is that this is usually the calmato here. We have 
the beginning of that and this. are equal. Equal temp to here. So it's roughly symmetrical, actually. And uh, rubato is just, this fluctuates. So that fluctuates in tempo. These two, at least the, the beginning of this, is equal to this. But in here, it accelerates. So around accelerando, so it accelerates. So it's just the beginning of this section and the calmato are equal. This tempo is equal to this tempo. And then this section, you have rubato. And this is my theory about, uh, about the performance of uh, Claire de Lune, is that in the beginning, the, on the first page, it's the first page of most editions here, measure 1 to 14, there should be no rubato. No rubato here. Most pianists... I would say the majority of pianists who play Claire de Lune try to do too much rubato too soon. So they, they try to, they, they mess up the first page with so much rubato that by the time they get to the second page, it, it just spoils it. It totally spoils it because then this, it sort of just cancels out the effectiveness of the rubato on the second page. So, no rubato here at all. In fact, you should play metronomically. I would suggest working on this section and this section with a metronome. Metronomic, I'll put it here. Metronomic and metronomic. Metronomic doesn't mean unmusical. It just means that you're keeping a very strict beat, which is what I do in my latest performance. And you can, you'll listen to that if you haven't listened to that. Uh, actually, I think in all my performances, I keep pretty much a strict beat, but in the, my, my latest performance, uh, I, I actually, I think it's more strict than in any of my other recordings of it. So we're metronomic here, we're metronomic here at about the same tempo. I would, um, I think, you know, and, and after playing this many years and teaching it many years, I've come to the conclusion that my favorite, absolute favorite tempo here is quarter note equals 108. I'm sorry, eighth note. Eighth note equals 108. And then here, a return to eighth note equals 108. Eighth note equals 108. Eighth note equals 108. Rubato, uh, it's not measured. Okay, so I would not play this page at all with a metronome. I wouldn't even practice it with a metronome. You really can't do that. Then this, the beginning of this works best, in my opinion, at eighth note equals 144. Okay, that, that's the equivalent of a dotted quarter note equals 48 at the beginning then the accelerando goes faster than that. So it goes into the 50s, perhaps into, even into the 60s somewhere. Then it slows down and get, goes back to the calmato. The calmato works very well, in my opinion, played at about the same as the beginning of the faster section. So you have eighth note equals 144 which is dotted quarter note equals 48. And then this gets slower. 
Okay, so um, I'll put decelerates. Or no, that's not the right word. I'll just put slower. Slower, gradually slower. So in those last few bars of the Kalmatho section before the tempo one, around the last four, three or four bars or so, then, then it gradually gets slower from about 144 per eighth note, then it gradually slows down to about to 108 where you were in the beginning. This provides a really highly satisfactory uh, a, a musical performance this way because it's symmetrical. See what Debussy did? Symmetry. We have this is equal, the two intersections are equal, this is the only one that's sort of by itself. And then, uh, then, then we have the end, and of course you can have a little retardando, a little retardando at the end. You get to the end there. If you do all of this, if you actually plan these tempi, and you know, I've tested this out many, many times. If you do all these tempi and adhere to them pretty strictly, the, the overall timing, the overall timing of the, the whole uh, clair de lune, sort of the ideal timing of it in minutes and seconds should be about five minutes about five minutes and 30 to 40 seconds. So about five and a half minutes to five minutes and 40 seconds, somewhere in there. And uh, that's, what I, that's what I achieved in my last performance, which is a very highly rated performance. A lot of people said it was very beautiful and that, that, that they really, really liked it a lot. And uh, it wasn't an accident. Okay, so what I did, I was counting in my head. I have a very, very good uh, system. I have a very, I have almost perfect tempo. You know, they talk about perfect pitch. People, who, musicians who have perfect pitch. I don't have perfect pitch, but I have near perfect tempo to where I can hit 108 almost exactly without having a metronome on or I can hit 144 almost exactly without having a metronome on because I've trained myself through the many years of being able to do that. So my um, ability to do that has, has enabled me to achieve this duration that I want. And that's important, it's an important thing because th this doesn't guarantee a musical performance of it of Clairdelune. It definitely doesn't guarantee that at all. But it is one thing that if that's not there, if that's not there, let's say if I, if I play it and it's uh, under five minutes, for example, and I time it, I know right away something's off, something's not right. It's just way too fast, I think, if it's under five minutes. I think my first performance from like more than 10 years ago or so was probably up there. Uh, I've actually slowed down over the years. I find that as I get older, I tend to gravitate towards slower tempi. But I think my last performance of the Claire de Lune, which many people like, I think it's my best of all. I think it's the most musical. And this is the way that I orchestrated uh, my performance of it. Nothing is by accident. Nothing is by accident. I actually planned all of this in my performance. You know, it sounds, when you listen to my performance, you might think, oh, it sounds natural. He's not counting. He's just playing how he feels. He's playing with a lot of feeling. Well, really, it's not true at all. I actually counted very strictly in my head. It's very highly metronomic. You can actually test it. Highly metronomic here and highly metronomic here. That does not mean non-musical. It just means that I'm keeping a strict beat, but 
the thing that makes it sound not metronomic is the way that I'm shaping those small phrases. And usually the, the phrases are in two measure units, one or even two measure units in Claire de Lune. It's usually not even longer than that. So anyway, uh, this is this is how I uh, this is this is how I break down Claire de Lune. And if you are interested in tutorials like this, many more like this, and everything I have to offer with weekly uploads, you go over to the Well-Rounded Pianist, become a member over there, and you get emails every week. Every Sunday I send out emails uh, to, to all the members informing them of my new uploads for the week. So this will be my first video on uh, Claire de Lune on the overall architecture of it. In fact, I'm going to make another video on that for the Well-Rounded Pianist. I just wanted to show you on YouTube uh, sort of my, the way I think, sort of thinking out loud. I wasn't, I didn't plan any of this. I just did this off the top of my head. I didn't have it graphed out or anything on the page. I just had my music open to the correct and got the bar numbers or measure numbers, mapped it out. And uh, that's the way I work. I love just working off the cuff, uh, improvising as I think. And so I thank you for joining me in my studio here as I uh, as I uh, think and plan my multi-video tutorial series on Claire de Lune. Go over to the Well-Rounded Pianist, become a member. I hope to see you there and stay safe in this time of the coronavirus in, in April, 2020. Uh, stay safe and stay healthy and until we meet again.